Safety on our job site is an integral part of our culture at Cleveland Construction. We expect you to always contribute to safe, productive, and quality work. And while safety, productivity, and quality are all important for a successful project, remember, if you are not working safely and you get injured, we cannot go back and eliminate the injury after the fact. Your dedication to safety on this job site ensures you are spared the agony of personal injury. So as we work together in construction, we must also work together to create a safe environment to do our work. We summarize this contractor-subcontractor relationship by saying that Cleveland Construction is Team Safety. As a member of Team Safety, you have an obligation to your family, your fellow workers, and to your employer to work in a safe and efficient manner. To accomplish this, it is extremely important that each worker is able to examine the environment and identify hazards so that your company supervisor can either eliminate the hazard or ensure that you're protected from the harsh effects of the hazard. Cleveland Construction has developed a program we call Job Site Hazard Analysis, or JHA. Your company is required to complete a JHA review at the beginning of each workday. You and your employer will examine the workplace conditions and the tasks to be performed that day and identify potential hazards along with the measures that must be taken to control or eliminate them before work begins. Your responsibility while working on this job site is to participate in the JHA meetings. Because a construction site is continuously changing, everyone involved with the work being performed should contribute to helping identify potential hazards to make the JHAs as productive as possible. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, also known as OSHA, the agency that regulates workplace safety, states that the job hazard analysis is a technique that focuses on job tasks as a way to identify hazards before they occur. It focuses on the relationship between the worker, the task, the tools, and the work environment. Ideally, after you identify uncontrolled hazards, you will take steps to eliminate or reduce them to an acceptable risk level. An accident is the occurrence of an unexpected event. Consequently, if we take the time to identify potential hazards and neutralize them, there will be no unexpected events. Whenever work is performed, your employer is required to have a designated competent person on site. OSHA defines a competent person as one who is capable of identifying existing and predictable hazards in the surroundings or working conditions, which are unsanitary, hazardous, or dangerous to employees, and who has authorization to take prompt corrective measures to eliminate them. If you have any questions or concerns about the work to be performed, or if you are not properly trained, talk with your company's competent person prior to going to work. Here are a few safety rules you must follow when working on a Cleveland Construction job site. Cleveland Construction requires that hard hats, high visibility vests, and safety glasses are to be worn at all times. Additional PPE may be required dependent on the specific task you are to perform. Always remember to inspect your personal protective equipment before using it, as it is your last line of defense. It is your employer's responsibility to provide you with the proper equipment to protect yourself. The Cleveland Construction Office Trailer is designated as the Safe Zone and First Aid Station. In the event of an evacuation, you are to immediately stop work, notify others in your vicinity, and to proceed to the Safe Zone. Your company's competent person will account for its employees and report to Cleveland Construction Superintendent. Emergency contact numbers and directions to the nearest medical facility are also posted in this trailer. All accidents must be immediately reported to Cleveland Construction Superintendents. Falls are the top cause of fatalities on construction job sites. Always wear and use proper fall arrest or restraint equipment. Respect warning lines, guardrails, and controlled access zones. Cover and secure floor openings and maintain a neatly organized work area to prevent slips and trips. A Cleveland construction supervisor must be notified prior to the removal or modification of guardrails previously established as a fall protection system. OSHA has established that construction workers who are on a working or walking surface and are exposed to a potential fall of six feet or more must be protected with the use of guardrails, safety net systems, or a personal fall arrest system. When working on a scaffold, those same protections are required when the work platform is more than 10 feet above a lower level. 
Only individuals trained to build scaffolding can erect scaffolding on the job site. Throughout the construction of this project, you may encounter areas that are being protected with warning lines or flag line systems, which are constructed using rope, wire or chains strung from stanchion to stanchion that are identified with bright colored flags or ribbons. These are not guardrails and are not built to the guardrail specifications. They are controlled access zones and are set up under special conditions to keep workers away from dangerous areas such as unprotected building edges, floor openings, and brick laying operations. If it is necessary for you to work beyond a warning line system, you will be required to obtain and use an appropriate fall arrest or restraint system, and only workers with the proper training can enter a controlled access zone. Some of the elevated work platforms you will encounter will include ladders, scaffolds, personal lifts, and stilts. It is important to choose the most appropriate and safest elevated work platform depending on the work to be completed. When working on ladders, be sure to use the proper length height ladder and maintain three points of contact. Extension ladders should extend three feet above the working surface and be secured at the top. The interior multi-purpose scaffold can be 6, 8, or 10 feet long, but because it is only 29 or 30 inches wide, it can be dangerous unless it is built and used according to the manufacturer's instructions. When setting these scaffolds in a stairway, you must remove the casters or wheels and replace them with base plates. Before stacking sections of these narrow scaffolds, the outriggers must be installed at all four corners to prevent tipping. Because these scaffolds are narrow and workers may forget and back off the platform, Cleveland Construction's company policy requires a guardrail on all open sides at any working height when it will not interfere with the operation of the scaffold or create an unsafe condition. When working in personnel lifts, pay attention to your work and travel area for any overhead and or floor obstructions. Reattach the safety chain or close the entrance gate immediately after getting in a lift. Never stand on or climb guardrails. Keep your feet on the floor of the lift at all times. When working in a boom type lift, you must be tied off to an anchor point in the lift at all times. OSHA has identified electrocution as one of the top four causes of construction fatalities. Cleveland Construction requires you to inspect extension cords daily before starting work. Check for breaks in insulation, missing grounding plugs, insulation pulled out of the plug, and other damage. Extension cords must be used only in continuous lengths without splice, except for molded or vulcanized splices. Extension cords passing through working areas shall be covered or elevated to protect the cord from damage. Also, extension cords shall not be fastened with staples, hung from nails, run over sharp edges, or suspended by wires, which may cause damage. If you find damage, do not use the extension cord until it is repaired and approved by your supervisor. Your company's supervisor must ensure that all damaged equipment is properly tagged out of service and removed. A portable ground fault circuit interrupter, or GFCI, shall be used between a power tool and any electrical outlet that is not GFCI protected. The GFCI is to be tested at the beginning of each work shift by using the test and reset buttons on the GFCI. Always exercise extreme caution with electrical equipment and power sources. Assume that all tools and lines are energized. Only qualified electricians should perform electrical work including entering an electrical room or moving breakers within an electrical panel. Lockout tagout procedures are used on every construction job site. Lockout tagout procedures safeguard workers from hazardous energy while performing service or maintenance on machines and equipment. Only lockout tagout trained individuals can perform this work. Excavation and trenching are among the most hazardous construction operations. A competent person who has been trained in the recognition of the specific hazards must be designated to supervise all activities in and around excavations. This person shall have the knowledge to determine the type of soil, identify the appropriate protective measures, and comply with all OSHA requirements. This includes sloping, benching, and shoring, whether to use a trench box, and where to locate access ladders. Stay away from open excavations and trenches unless you have been properly trained and are authorized to work in the area. 
A construction site is a confusing and potentially dangerous environment by itself. So when you add the public to the job site, the potential for incidents increase dramatically. When the public walks through a parking lot or enters the building, they are not expecting to encounter construction hazards. They have not been trained to look for hazards, so extra effort is needed to warn them of hazards with signs, barricades, and warning lines. If work must be completed inside a building or environment that includes access to the public, a specific safety plan must be prepared and proper safety precautions must be utilized. Best practices are developed by inspecting the work areas and adjacent public areas continuously to look for opportunities to warn the public and protect them from construction-related hazards. Be aware of and eliminate all trip hazards. Maintaining good housekeeping throughout the construction is a must. It is often the little things that can help avoid big problems. When lifting heavy material, bend at your knees and keep your back straight. It is important to get extra help when an object is too heavy or bulky to lift or move comfortably by yourself. Proper material storage keeps passageways clear and materials away from heavy traffic areas. You have a responsibility to understand the capacities of any material handling equipment you use and to operate in a safe manner. When moving the material from one location to another, examine the entire route you will be using before you begin. Clear any debris and obstructions that may hinder your passage and select a route that offers fewer challenges, steps, public traffic, ramps, and sharp turns. Accidents result from unexpected events and planning reduces the unexpected. You can prevent and respond to exposure from hazardous materials by reading labels, knowing the proper handling, cleanup, and disposal of various materials. You should also wear the proper personal protective equipment. Evacuate and ventilate any affected areas to reduce hazardous levels of the contaminant. If exposure occurs, immediately report the incident to your supervisor. Determining the proper treatment, including first aid and professional medical assistance, can be found from the product labels or the safety data sheets, or SDS, also referred to as material safety data sheets, which can be found in two job site locations, the job site office of the contractor who brought the product to the job site, or Cleveland Construction's job site office. Read the labels so you know what you are handling. It's not just your right to know, it's your responsibility to know. Hot works permits are required to control welding, burning, cutting, and other spark producing activities. It is your responsibility to find out if you need a permit for your work operations if they produce sparks. When working with spark producing activities, you are required to have a fire extinguisher in your immediate work area. If you see a fire, sound the alarm and call for professional firefighters and go to the designated safe area. If you're using a fire extinguisher to put out small fires, remember the PASS technique, which stands for pull, aim, squeeze, and sweep. While fires can cause damage to the structure and construction schedules, the greatest loss is personal injury or death. Cleveland Construction views safety as the most important aspect of your job. Our goal is to make sure that you go home uninjured to your family and friends after every workday. This video is designed to cover some basic safety expectations and the aspects that will most affect you as you perform your job. It is also important to review the written safety rules that are found in the Cleveland Construction Safety Worker Job Site Handbook, your company's safety manual, and OSHA regulations and safety standards. Some additional reminders include the following. General housekeeping is everyone's responsibility. You are expected to do your part to maintain a clean and organized job site. Also, Cleveland Construction requires you to conduct yourself in a professional manner. Rude, abusive, and vulgar comments or clothing and suggestive graffiti are inappropriate and will not be tolerated. If you create a hazard while performing your work, you must correct the hazard or communicate to your company's competent person to ensure all workers on site are protected from the hazard. This includes covering and marking holes, replacing rebar caps displaced during work, restoring warning lines, and replacing guardrails. If your work creates exposed ends of reinforced steel, they must be covered with approved rebar caps to avoid cuts and impalement. If you come across rebar caps that have been knocked off, take the time to reinstall them and never work above uncapped rebar. 
If you are unable to follow the established safety rules, you must talk with your company's competent person to determine how the work will be accomplished. Violations of these safety rules will result in a verbal or written warning issued by Cleveland Construction, which can ultimately lead to your removal from the job site for unsafe work practices. Additional safety concerns that you may encounter will be identified as part of a site-specific job hazard analysis and will be reviewed with you by your company supervisor or the designated competent person. If at any time you are concerned with your company's safety practices or responsiveness to your safety concerns, you can report it confidentially to Cleveland Construction's management personnel so the issue can be addressed immediately. Welcome to our job site. It is your responsibility as a member of Team Safety to follow all safety rules and expectations and to remind and help your fellow coworkers follow these safety rules as well. It is everyone's job to make this construction site as safe as possible.